Her and his befuddled. What does uh, Teddy P want with me? Bitch, the same thing all the niggas want from you. Sucking proof. That's what they want. Sucking proof. share and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And if you are not a part of our Bella book club, please hit the Patreon link below. And for a small $5 fee, you can join us over there in all the shenanigans. Now, let's talk about Corinne Steffens. I said it right this time. No, fuck her. Kern Stevens, because what you won't do is shiz on my Teddy P. Part three. So anyway, where we left off, okay, she had just did the Oprah Winfrey show, girl. She thought she was the shiz. You heard me. She thought she was so much of the shiz that when Teddy called her, she was confused and, uh, let's say, grossed out. Okay, who the fuck is shit? So, it goes like this. Bring, bring. Hot pussy goes, hello. The other line says, is this Karen? Yes, this is Karen or Corn or, or whatever the bitch name is. We gonna be evil because she was messing with Teddy P. But whatever the huzzy name is, okay? She says, um, this is Kim from Harpo Studios. Your episode has already aired on the East Coast and Teddy P... Teddy Pendergrass has contacted us because he wants you to have his number. Karen is befuddled. What does uh, Teddy P want with me? Bitch, the same thing all the niggas want from you. Sucking proof. That's what they want. Sucking proof. Reputation, yep. it, it, it projects over the world, okay? Now, all the men want to try you out, okay? And I don't give a fuck about her trying to say that my man was a paraplegic, okay? I don't give a fuck. He needs to know that he is still a man the same way Merlin Santana needed to know that he was still a man. Because if you can't get an old, you know, a uh, groupie hoe to give you the sucking truth, then all is lost. Now, she said the first conversation she had with Teddy P lasted four hours. Okay, she said that he was full of um, compliments for how she presented herself on the Oprah show and that, you know, you looked beautiful, just, you know, fueled her vanity, basically. But she said normally when she receives calls like this, it only lasts a couple of minutes. But with Teddy P, it lasted a couple of hours. You know, she said it was strange. Mm -hmm. That's because Teddy P was putting that judge on you. The girl. conversation also included uh, pieces of his life and what he had uh, been up to at this point. She said that actually she was hoping that she could learn something from the 56-year-old man, okay, who had been a part of the business for years. She also said that their conversation also consisted of him explaining that he was recovering from tonsil cancer. Okay, she said as he spoke, she is picturing people swarming around his wheelchair catering to him. You know, she say she also was wondering if the man had a sex life. Nasty bitch. Why you worried about his, well, you know what? I did say, you know, if I ever had a chance to meet Teddy, I would, I would smash this into his face so hard, girl. I wouldn't need that bottom half the world. I would smash, you hear me, this and that. Oh my God, so good. Whew. Anyway, Teddy P says, you know, I bet you thought I called so that I could knock them boots, huh? Karen was appalled because she said she ain't heard that saying since 1990 something. It's now 2006. Grandpa has turned her off. Girl, that's not just grandpa. 
That's Teddy P. I don't feel like getting something tonight. I want some company. And you look like you're just my type. Teddy P probably would have been the only motherfucker that you have ever had sex with that would have ate that cat. You hear me? I can't stand a bitch that blocked blessings. Hey, this bitch says, you know, I believe that Teddy P was thinking that he was connecting with me by using terms like knocking the boots. She said he was more like connecting with my gag reflex. Bitch! Think I better let it go. This is what she said. She said she was confused because he was a quadriplegic. Okay, I didn't know. I thought he was a paraplegic, but he was a quadriplegic, right? And she didn't understand what he wanted with her. This girl is so messed up in the head that she doesn't understand that a man's specific goal is not to fuck, okay? Maybe... He just want to be seen with the woman who round here sucking the sense out of people. He okay. just wanted to, you know, have your company. Like Mr. Burns wanted to have your company. That 82-year-old man that told you that you are much better or that lied to you and told you that you are much better than a strip club. She got off the phone with him that day wondering, does his pickle work? You minimized yourself, girl. Why are you minimizing yourself to just sex? She said a few days later, she received another call from Mr. Teddy P again. Okay? She said this one lasted longer than the first call. Okay? Now, she said she was reluctant to stay on the phone with Teddy P. Why? Because he was resonating with her gag reflex. Really? As much dick as you sucked and you ain't never gagged now a man, Teddy P, that's in a wheelchair that can't fuck you, is bothering you? Your gag reflex, bitch, please. She please. confused about the conversation because now Teddy P is saying, I believe that this is divine intervention, okay? He wants her to come to Philadelphia to be with him. Where the fuck is his wife? Where is his wife? That I he invited her to the Rhythm and Blues Awards and to another award ceremony where the Urban League is honoring him. Mm -hmm. She said that that caught her off guard, okay? She said, I put him off saying, um, I don't know, I have to check, okay? Girl, if that was me, I'd have pushed his ass. We would have on matching track suits. She said she was turned off. Oh, my God. She said that she was turned off because after talking to him one time on the phone, she said the next phone call, he's inviting her to go on trips with him, to come to Philadelphia, to accompany him to different award ceremonies. She was turned off. This probably was the only man who actually really treated you like a human being, bitch. And you was turned off. Now, I thought I was being too hard on her when it came down to Merlin Santana, but bitch. And then you're going to write it in this book to make Teddy P look like he was pressed for you? Bitch, Teddy P ain't got to be pressed for nobody. You heard me. She took it as he thought that she was needy. No, you dumb bitch. No. He took it as, I want to take her and show her a good time. How about that? He said also, it's been a very long time since he's been hot on the charts. So it's not like he could be looking for a comeback via her. Bitch, are you crazy? I don't give a hell how many dicks you suck. That is Teddy P. She thought that Teddy P was trying to use her as a way back into the limelight. He ain't got to do that. He ain't got to do that. Okay? He's a man before everything. He may just like pretty women around him, which a lot of men do. Okay? Mr. Burns D said that a uh, long time ago, she probably would have accepted his offer. Okay? For her son's sake. You know, for financial gain. Yes. You're a liar. You're a liar. If they're not hot, you don't want to suck it. Okay, you ain't want to suck Merlin Santana, and you didn't want to suck uh, um, Teddy P. 
because he wasn't relevant enough for you. You don't suck ding dong that is not relevant. That okay. after Confessions of Video Vixen, they utilized the term groupie so much with her that she did not want to be attached to that name at all. Okay, but I feel like when you're a groupie, you're doing groupie shits. Teddy P was trying to treat you like a young lady and show you a nice time. Girl. I want to talk about how people uh, assume that she has blacklisted herself, you know, and that those people are wrong, that uh, the people that she mentioned in the book don't want nothing to do with her, okay? Again, I've seen DJ Vlad videos where in her mind, she like, oh, no, we're fine. We hug each other. We talk and everything else. And then when you see the people that she talked about in the book or the men that she talked about in her book, them people be like, don't mention that bitch name to me. They are not okay with you, girl. Ja Rule is still dragging your ass through the mud, girl. Child, so just so you know, this part, this book right here gonna go real fast. You heard me. I, hey, I don't even, hey, this is gonna go real fast. But anyway, uh, this part that I'm gonna graze through, because this part is just full of shit. Okay, what this hussy is not going to convince me is that now, because she didn't told the world about how much, you know, uh, you know, she didn't sucked all over the world, that now you have people that are hiring her to motivate them to be better people. Okay, because now she's on a tour to different college campuses, talking about her experiences. Okay. Uh, we all have something to say. We all have a story to tell, but I, I don't know what kind of, I don't know what kind of shenanigans this is that people are booking her on college campuses to come by and talk about her book about sucking pickles. So we just want to graze past that. Oh, wait, 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 come back, Nate. Also, what she's trying to tell me, us, is that, uh, you know, while she was in, some of these conferences or some of these speaking events that there were students who would come out, ask her for her autograph, ask her for her opinions, ask her for, um, you know, advice. These young people was telling her how much uh, effect that she was having on their lives and that she was motivating. I, hey, brother, brother, you, uh, I, sister, I don't know. You can keep all that bullshit to yourself. So anyway, let's move on to MySpace. Yes, MySpace. It was this thing called MySpace. I never touched it. Okay. I don't know why. Did I touch it? I don't know, but it was like, um, a social app before all. Okay. And she had heard some deplorable things about MySpace. It was an app where people would go on and they would uh, do all kinds of shenanigans. You know, they would attack their favorite star. Speaking about her, Joe Rogan, she said she didn't want to be bothered with it because she heard such bad things about it. You know, that it was predators on there. It was, you know, all kinds of people under the stairs was there trying to, you know, I guess suck you down to the depths of hell with them but she say that she did not decide to touch my space until to do joe rogan you know from fear factor and my favorite show news radio with my girlfriend candy alexander until joe rogan had got into an argument going back and forth with somebody who was an asshole now joe rogan is an asshole so you know he get into it with an asshole i'm not bothered but she said that intrigued her she wanted to know why joe rogan would go back and forth with somebody on an app okay what's it app? what did it even call the app then i don't know but now she's interested in my space. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. Have a good one.